Our first reading comes from St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Brethren, see to it that you walk with care, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of your time, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not become foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine, for in that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your hearts to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to God the Father, be subject to one another in the fear of Christ. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John. At that time there was a certain royal official whose son was lying sick in Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus had come from Judea into Galilee, he went to him and besought him to come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Jesus therefore said to him, Unless you see signs and wonders, you do not believe. The royal official said to him, Sir, come down before my child dies. Jesus said to him, Go thy way, thy son lives. The man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him and departed. But even as he was now going down, his servants met him and brought word, saying that his son lived. He asked of them, therefore, the hour in which he had gotten better. And they told him yesterday at the seventh hour the fever left him. The father knew then that it was at that very hour in which Jesus had said to him, Thy son lives. And he himself believed and his whole household. And he himself believed and his whole household. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And the angel Gabriel came to the Virgin Mary and said, God wishes that you give him a human nature. How can it be? I'm a virgin. I've given my life over to our God. The Holy Spirit shall overshadow you. And the Holy One to be born shall be called Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. And our Blessed Mother said, Fiat voluntas tua, thy will be done. And so in her, Jesus was born, and in Jesus, each and every one of us were born. And we live in him, we move in him, and we have our being in him. <coughs> and so we ask him through the general, the salutation of Saint Gabriel, that we too may receive the truth that this good ruler received that day. And so we pray together. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners at the hour of our death. Amen. In Holy Scriptures, only twice did our Lord come to Galilee. You know the first time. The first time our Blessed Mother was invited to a wedding feast. And at that wedding feast, Jesus also was invited and his disciples. And our Lord was drinking and his disciples were drinking the wine. And our Blessed Mother was watching. And she observed and she went over to her son and she said to them, Son, they have no more wine. And our Lord answered these words, Gune, kaimoi kaisoi, Gune, woman, what to me, what to you? What does it mean to me and what does it mean to you? If I do this act of performing this miracle, you are sending me to the cross, is what he's saying to her. Woman, because there was one woman who sent us to sin, Eve. And now the new Eve is calling the new Adam and saying to them, they have no more wine. So the first time our Lord Jesus Christ comes to Galilee, Cana of Galilee, he's coming there to initiate that which you and I need as the antidote to sin. We need his blood. 
Without the shedding of his blood, there will be no forgiveness of sin. And so the indication symbol, symbolized by the six jars of water that become wine, so much so that the chief taster said, this is the best wine. You've waited to the end to give us the best wine. The best wine is that which takes away our sins, the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the first coming of Jesus. This gospel tells us there are two comings. There's the coming in which Jesus will lay down his life for us. Then there's the coming in which Jesus will come and gather us together, heal our souls, and bring us to the kingdom of heaven. The second coming. And so, first thing we have to realize is in this gospel passage, the two comings of our Lord Jesus Christ in this world are prefigured. Second, what does our Lord do? Katabino. Three times the word is used. Katabino. In the Latin, it's descendente. Katabino means there is a coming down. Jesus will also anabino, come up, re be returned to the Father. But katabino, he comes down to be with us. It is the mystery of the incarnation being presented to us. It means that Jesus Christ has two natures. The divine nature and the human nature. He has one divine personality, the second person of the Blessed Trinity. These two natures, we say, are what we call the hypostatic union. The hypostatic union means that Jesus Christ has both a human and divine nature. And very often, he uses his human and divine nature to work miracles. Now, there's a conflict here. Jesus Christ is coming down. He's coming down for one purpose alone, and that is to bring our souls back to the Father by the means of the cross that he would endure for us. At Cana of Galilee, the word went out that the miracle worker was here. The man's son was dying. What would you do? If your son was dying and you tried everything else, you finally come to the conclusion, I've got to come to this person. And so this ruler comes to our Lord Jesus Christ. He descends. All of these descendings mean that we must humble ourselves. We must lower ourselves, as this man did, in the beginning of faith. So this faith is not perfect. <coughs> We have another example of this as well, the centurion. Some of the scripture authors say that this is the same. The centurion and the ruler are the same. St. Augustine says, no, it cannot be. Because the centurion, when he sent his servants to our Lord Jesus Christ, said to Jesus, when Jesus said to him, I will come down and heal the boy. No, 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 he says, I'm a man under authority. And I know that if I say to this young man here in my charge, do this, he will do it. He will make my word flesh. And I know that all you need do is speak the word, and my servant will be healed. So this is perfection of faith, knowing that all God has to do is speak the word, and it is done. Just like in Genesis, God said, let there be light, and there was light. And hence, all things were created by the Word of God. Now, this man comes in the beginning of faith. We know faith begins in a child. We have baptized several of the children here. That is a seed that begins in each one of us. This faith is based upon the conviction that Jesus Christ will come into our lives purify our hearts by means of his blood, and seek to bring us back to the kingdom of God itself. This is the faith. This is why we call it the action, the mystery of faith. And we say that, each priest says it, right within the context of the consecration of the precious blood. Now, the man listens to Jesus as he says, you people, Unless you see signs and wonders, you do not believe. The man doesn't know what to say. Come down before my son dies. Katabino. What does the son represent? 
The sun represents the soul of each and every one of us. Come down, we pray. Come down, O Lord Jesus, upon our altar, because our souls need life. Our souls need grace. And so our Lord Jesus Christ says, Go on your way. Your son lives. Now the increase of faith. I believe that Jesus' word is going to take place. So he begins going down, katabino, and then here comes his servants. Your son lives. You don't need to bring the master. Your son lives. He says, what time did the boy? And now look at this. In the word of God, John, in the wedding feast of Cana of Galilee, Mary says this to the servant. Do whatever he tells you. That is the seventh word of our Blessed Mother in Scripture. To the servant. Do whatever he tells you. And then she's silent. Here, Jesus at the seventh hour does the miracle. The man knows that at the seventh hour Jesus said, Your son lives. And so it was that he said, What hour? And they told him, At the seventh hour the fever left him. And hence, now the perfection of faith. He now comes to the realization that the centurion had at the very beginning. All you need to do is say a word and everything is put in order. Here we are in evil times. Here we are being tested by Almighty God. Here we are being tested in faith. If our Lord Jesus Christ is Son of God, He ought to be able to handle every situation. Our faith says that He is the Son of God. I was talking with the three young men who are converts last night, and I keep asking the question, why do you want to become a Catholic? I want them to be convinced that the only reason they want to become Catholic is because that is the manner in which I can save my soul. Because Jesus Christ came to me in order that He might pour out His blood for my soul and bring my soul back into the kingdom of heaven. And so I said, okay, Dan, we're going to take your soul. I asked the other two young men, Dan's soul, is it worth more than all the material wealth of Minnesota? The two young men go, yes. His soul is spiritual. Everything in Minnesota is material. Therefore, the soul is much more important than all of Minnesota. I said, let's go farther. Is Dan's soul more important than all the United States with all its resources? Everything material in the United States. Billions of dollars, billions of everything. Is it more or less valuable than Dan's soul? Dan's soul is more valuable than all of the United States put together. Go farther. What about the entire world? Would Dan's soul be more valuable than the entire material order of the earth? And the answer is yes. Dan's soul is more important and more valuable than the entire earth. Well, let's go farther then. What about the universe? The material universe. All that you see, Jupiter, Neptune, Mars, Moon, Sun. Is Dan's soul more precious than all the material universe? Yes. Yes, they said. Why? I asked them. Why is Dan so more precious? Why is everyone so more precious than the entire universe? And the answer is because Jesus ransomed us by his blood. He purchased us and hence we have been bought for God the Father by the coin of the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Without the shedding of that blood, no forgiveness of sin. With the shedding of that blood, our faith is confirmed and we are perfected in that faith. Therefore, God the Father who is love, as Saint Therese the Little Flower said, God the Father who is love can put me through anything. He put her through a year and a half of darkness. No consolation, just bitter darkness. She believed that this was the act of God's love to perfect her faith 
and it did. All things cooperate for those who love God who is love. And everything turns us back to God if we but have that disposition to seek to save our souls. Now we're not only concerned here today with the fact of the two comings of Jesus, with the fact that Jesus Katabino came down to touch each and every one of us and in humility we come down to receive this gift, we're also concerned about someone very special, our mother. Today is the motherhood of our Blessed Mother. And on the 13th of this month, this coming Wednesday I believe it is, the 13th, today is the 10th, right? 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th, Wednesday. Traditional Catholics are gathering in Rome to pray that Holy Rosary to defeat the evil that is threatening the church. We are asked, each and every one of us, to pray the entire rosary on the 13th of this month. In union with all those in Rome, just as we had at the Battle of Lepanto, just as we had at other serious turns in the history of our world, we turn to our Blessed Mother and we pray to her. And we ask her to bring back the faith, bring back the knowledge of what is most important, that God the Father so loved us that he sent his only begotten Son through the instrumentality of Mary to enter into our flesh and to offer the blood of that flesh upon a cross that you and I may find the pathway that leads to eternal life. And so this is the quest that we have to bring back our faith, the perfection of our faith. And that is why we turn to our Blessed Mother this Wednesday in a special way as we pray the rosary every night. As these young men, I ask them, what is your Catholic life like? What are you doing in your families to show that you're loving and desiring to be truly Catholic? And they have it. The first thing they begin with, well, we're praying the rosary together, Father. Great. What about in the morning? Are you offering up? the sacrifices of your day to save a soul, a sinner who is dying and has need of someone to pray and make a sacrifice for him. We went through their day to make them realize that every aspect of your day is a manner, a way in which we can save a soul. No matter what takes place in our life, we are Catholic. Called to do what? Be apostolic. Bring souls back to God. And the best way is in and through our Blessed Mother's Prayer. Let us ask Almighty God to give us the same sense in our spiritual lives today. The presence of Mary, the presence of Jesus, they are our best friends. And we must always speak to them, ask them to guide us in all the ways of our lives. Let us turn to them and ask Almighty God today to grant us this love for Our Lady and love for our Lord Jesus Christ who purchased us for God our Father through the blood he shed. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.